Conservation biology is life science. It is the scientific study of animals and plants with an important question in mind. How do we protect these things and the environments they depend on? As human beings have taken more and more land for use as cities and suburbs, conservation biologists like Dr. Luke Dollar have stepped up to help find ways to allow people and animals to share the planet. My name's Luke Dollar, and I'm a conservation biologist. I'm originally from Alabama. I grew up in the rural South, um, spent most of my early years on my grandparents' farm. I always liked science and, and liked the idea of helping people, so I thought about being a doctor. But one of the summers when I went home, the forest I grew up running around in, out behind our farm, wasn't there anymore. Someone had decided it was time to clear cut that forest. And it felt like a part of my childhood that I hadn't realized how important it was to me had been ripped away. And at that point, that was the moment when I decided that instead of being a doctor, I was going to try to help people and help the world in a different way. Now it's going to work in conservation to help preserve animals and nature. During his junior year in college, Dr. Dollar got the chance of a lifetime to go to Madagascar and study lemurs, members of the primate family common to the island. During his research, Dr. Dollar made a discovery that changed the course of his career. One of the animals I was supposed to be following and collecting information on one day disappeared. We didn't know where it went. A few days later, we found what was left of that animal. And the guy, his name was Pierre, he said, Afusa got it. And he had this look on his face of just pure terror. I'd never heard of Afusa before. Looks sort of like a cougar or a mountain lion, but on a smaller scale. It's about six feet long from the tip of its nose to the tip of its tail, almost two feet high at the top of its head, long and lean, very muscular. It has claws like a cat. It has a snout that looks kind of like a dog, and it has really big, broad, strong teeth. This was an animal that was at the top of the food chain in Madagascar, and we didn't even know for sure what the activity pattern of this animal was. We just didn't know. And so I decided that's where I was gonna spend the next many, many years of my life, is finding answers to all those questions. Over the years, I've trapped more than 100 FUSA. We always take an animal back to camp once we've trapped it. We measure everything, the body length, how long their arms are, how long their snout, is how long their different teeth are, how big is their torso, how long is their tail, how big is their foot. We're collecting blood and tissue samples to assess the overall health of the animal itself. We're getting all of these measurements because these are, unfortunately, maybe some of the last FUSA in the wild. I estimate that there are probably no more than 2,500 FUSA left in the wild on Earth. From the very beginning, I knew that I was going to have to spend my time not only researching this unique animal at the top of the food chain in Madagascar, but I was going to have to spend a pretty significant amount of time trying to conserve it as well. And we've learned a lot about these animals. We've learned a lot about these populations. I ended up, over the last 15 years, spending the majority of my time working with the people who live around the forests and in the forests in Madagascar, so that together, people and the wildlife have an opportunity at long-term survival. It's changing the lives of people. It's also giving some hope for the future of the wildlife there. A lot of people ask me, why is it important to go study a particular animal? Why is it important that we protect this species or that species? Why are FUSA important? Why is it important to conserve them? What does that have to do with us? Every member, every species, is a part of a greater ecosystem where every member plays some role, but what's important, even beyond the species themselves, is that system, because it's the system in which we live too.
Thanks to conservation biologists like Dr. Luke Dollar, we understand more every day about the world we live in, not just about the FUSA, but about all of Madagascar. And not just about Madagascar, but about all of Africa, about the world we all share. The web of life connects us all, and the better we understand it, the better off we'll be.